Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope y'all been having a beautiful ass weekend. Um, we are going into the Daryl Brooks situation. I know you guys thought we forgot about that. I know y'all thought we forgot about the Brooks situation, but it's just a longer trial, so we're taking our time with it. Now, we have prosecution speaking with one of the sergeants in the situation. And again, these are all puzzle pieces that come together because all these people were in the same area at the same time around the time that he tried to escape the parade. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. Brooks over here looking handsome as ever, you know, looking all calm and collected at, as usual, never unhinged, you know what I'm talking about? But anyways, let's get straight into this thing. Everybody go check out the Patreon if you with me, if you trying to get me up to 150 patrons. And also get to my Instagram, it's called agtactical25, everything in the description. Let's get into this. Oh, those eyes, bro. <laughs> Straight off the bat. All right, I'm told we are, well, first of all, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. I'm told the jurors are done with lunch and available for us. So I presume the state's able to call its next witness. Yes, we're ready, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, great. Then we'll have the jurors brought out. I will, um, Go tell them since I have now. Look at his face. Like, just the... Ju I'm like, damn, bro. It looks like he wants to eat her alive. And in a bad way. Not in a good way. <laughs> Your boy is looking at her as... It, like, if he was um the guy with the laser beams from X-Men, he would have been killed her and everybody in this building. Just, you know, you know through the eyes. It's all in the eyes, baby. <laughs> like, damn, bro. Chill out. was my ICF received? I have not looked at my mail today. I can't tell you that. Also, for the record, I'm appearing by special appearance on behalf of my client. I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you. Could you start that over? Yeah. Oh, that's what happens when I send you on errands. All right. Um, the audio is now on. I did call the case earlier. Just noted that the appearances are as they were before. The jury is on its way in. Um, and I just will state in case it wasn't clear, Mr. Brooks asked about an inmate communication form. I have not reviewed my mail today, so I can't tell you whether I've received anything, but I'll take a look and at the next break. Uh, Everything he does, he's trying to find a loophole like, oh, you didn't read my inmate report, so therefore, you know, I'm free to go or some shit like he doesn't understand anything about the law, which is why I don't understand why he says everything with such conviction. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he knows this shit. He's been studying, you know, undergrad for three years. He understands this shit. No, bro. Like, <clears throat> what's the point of arguing? Need be. We can address that. And I just wanted to state that I'm here. <clears throat> I'm here under special appearance on behalf of my client with all rights reserved. Oh, God. All right, I'll rise for the jury, please. It's like he gets nervous when he knows big witnesses are about to come in. Like, he hasn't said he reserves the right for his client or whatever the fuck he said. He hasn't said that for, like, days and days, maybe weeks, it feels like. Because with the officers, I'm trying to keep them all kind of together, right? This is around the same time that they, you know, they do the thing with all the other officers. They cross-examine all the other officers. So you could tell he's nervous with this one because he hasn't said that before. Yeah, he can't be here irritated, confused. <laughs> Calls Officer Christopher Moss. All right, officer, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right upper riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> 
First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. First name is Christopher, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. Last name is Moss, M-O-S-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you employed? Currently employed with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you worked in law enforcement? I've been a sworn law enforcement officer for 14 years. All of your time was spent. Man, some veterans out here. Everybody go check out my damn, um, my damn Bradley Yon video. There's an officer in that video who was an officer for like 25 years. And these, the, all these dudes look kind of young. So I'm like, damn, bro, why didn't you start being a police officer? Like, bro, over here, 14 years deep. Bro looking kind of young. So, yeah, these dudes, veterans. When you listen to what they say, you know, they're the ones higher up there who should be able to, like, keep their composure, have the most unfogged memory, because, you know, they've seen this shit before. Spent with the city of Waukesha Police Department? No, ma'am. Who else did you work for? Six and a half years was spent working for the city of Oconomowoc Police Department, and a year, or just over a year, was spent working part-time for the village of North Prairie Police Department. Were you working for the city of Waukesha on November 21 of 2021? I was. Mm. Do you recall uh, participating in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that afternoon? Yes, ma'am, I do. What was your role, please? Uh, for that event, I was tasked uh, with the City of Waukesha Police Department's Honor Guard Unit. Uh, specifically, I was part of the Color Guard, which is the group that leads the parade carrying uh, the... Oh, shit. This man was actually, when she said he took part of the parade, he actually took part. I thought he was like, you know, just an, an attendee, you know what I mean? Like he was just like, two of the other cops, they were just there with their families, you know? They are just walking and they saw shit and they kind of just went into police officer mode, right? But this guy was actually leading the parade, so he could have got hit. So he's like a witness slash victim almost, like, you know, traumatically at least. Like, because, you know, shit like this doesn't just go away from your mind, especially if you're in the line of fire. So let's, let's, let's continue. American flag and the state of Wisconsin flag. And uh, were you, so you were there right at the beginning of the parade, correct? Yes, ma'am, I was. Do you remember about what time the parade kicked off? Uh, approximately 4 p.m. Did you march the entire route of the parade? I did. Did you complete the parade? Yes, I did. Oh. Without incident? Without incident. And after you completed marching the parade with the color guard, did you go someplace? Yes, upon completion of the uh, parade route, as we were the first entity to finish since we led the parade, I subsequently returned to the city of Waukesha Police Department. Oh, and shit. What? Oh, shit. So he, sh damn, imagine my boy just finished that shit, hopped in the whip, and bopped off. He, <clears throat> he was like, yep, straight back to work. That's crazy. If that was me, I would have hung around, but I probably would have saw the horrific bullshit. But um, he was out of there. Why did you go back to the department? Uh, that evening, I was assigned to late power shift, which is from 5 p.m. to 3 a.m., and I was designated to work area 308. Okay, so you marched in the parade with the color guard, then you were going to go work a full shift that evening. That's correct. Damn, from 5 to 3? Hold on, 5, 6, 7... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two. That's a ten hour shift after doing the parade. Bro, you got me you got me fucked up. What are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? I'm going home. I don't want to march the damn parade anyway. That's crazy. It, to think about you're marching the parade in the hot sun. Maybe it's cold. I don't know how it is in Waukesha. You guys let me know in the comments how cold it gets in Waukesha around that time it's probably cold but anyways you gotta walk march do all that shit and then work a 10-hour shift that shit is wild what the fuck as you were uh, back at the police station um what do you recall happening um as i was changing out of my honor guard uniform into my duty uniform um i heard multiple uh police sirens emanating from the downtown area um i subsequently tracked uh, our reporting system and observed that there was a call for service that Officers were responding to an emergency fashion reference a subject with a knife. Oh. And where was where was that response? Oh, and if you you know if you remember this, they called and said Brooks had a knife and shit. So this is this man finished the whole parade. That's crazy. So the parade was really going on for that long. He was able to finish the parade, go to work. Right, everything's pretty close, but he was able to finish the parade, go to work, 
get the call about the man with the knife, and then he drives into the parade a little bit later and causes all the damage. So that's how long that parade was taking. Like, just to think about it, it was a big parade. That's like a big ass parade. If he was able to get to work, get a call about that other incident, and then the tragedy still happens while the parade is going, that's that's a big ass parade. Response directed to what location? I believe that response was direct to the area of Frame Park in the city of Waukesha. Did you do anything at that point? Um, I was still technically off duty, so I continued to get dressed quickly uh, in the event that they needed additional resources to that location. And uh, did you ever get called to that location, sir? No, I was never called to that location. What happened next? Um, as I continued to uh, monitor my handheld radio uh, while still getting dressed for duty, um, I heard via our primary channel um, fellow officers screaming hysterically on the radio. Uh, requesting people to respond to the downtown area and the parade route. What did you do? Um, you responded like a mother. Got dressed as the fastest I've ever gotten dressed before, and uh, subsequently sprinted out of the police department, uh, entered a fleet, and responded in emergency fashion to the downtown area. Yeah, he got he turned into the dash. You took, shit. You, that, that's like a shot of adrenaline right there. You hear your your homies, your people screaming hysterically on the mic. That's like a. I'm ready to go. Juice the fuck up. What do you mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Shit. I could imagine Specifically, that where did you go? Um, I arrived in the area of Clinton and Main Street. And can you uh, briefly describe for us what you saw when you arrived at that intersection, sir? Um, upon arrival, uh, to describe what was just absolute chaos. Um, as I'd exited my fleet, I looked east and westbound on Main Street. Um, there were civilian subjects uh, lying on the ground in every direction I looked, um, oh. screaming, yelling, etc. Screaming, yelling, etc. <laughs> Bro is actually kind of funny. That's crazy. Imagine hopping out and you look every direction, everybody's down. I would think that everybody's dead. I'm like, holy shit, there's like 70 dead people out here. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, you got to have your mind right going out there. You can't be, you can't be no little scary person doing this type of job being a police officer is really tough i ain't gonna lie did you uh attempt to render aid to these individuals i did i uh, ran in a westerly direction between clinton and maple uh, attempting to render aid to two elderly female subjects did you um at some point leave that duty and speak with officer scolton yes i did where did you speak with Officer Skolton? Uh, in the vicinity where I was, um, I ran into Officer Skolton, who approached me from a westerly direction. Um, upon making contact with him, he advised that he had fired rounds at a red Ford SUV. Oh, Skolton's the Viking guy. <clears throat> the redhead, like 6'2", 300-pound man. Yeah, that's the Viking, bro. He was the only one who got off at Adam. And I looked into the... Um, the, the reports and shit he hit all those shots he didn't even because in the video i made i was like oh that's reckless he shouldn't have took those shots because the car was moving which i mean fuck dude that's kind of like yeah you know there's like people behind that car but he hit every shot it just didn't kill brooks or hit brooks it just hit the car so that that's pretty impressive to to say you know what i mean because he was pretty far if you go back to the video I'm not going to play it again because I had to wait days for YouTube to let the video be played. But he took a lot of shots at the car, like at least three. Specifically in the scape, um, I asked him if he was OK. He stated that he was and he sub subsequently said that uh, we needed to find the vehicle. And uh, did you, in fact, set out to try and find this vehicle? I did. Prior to Officer Skolton telling you that, did you have any uh, vehicle description? I did not. Uh, the radio traffic was complete chaos with uh, people screaming about injured uh, participants of the parade being all over the downtown area. So where did you go to look for the vehicle? Um, as I was moving my fleet uh, near um, Donnie Boyce Tavern on Main Street, um, I subsequently observed a male Hispanic running towards me, waving his hands frantically to garner my attention. And as uh, I asked him what he needed, um, he subsequently said, What do you want? <laughs> he knew where the vehicle was. 
did you um, understand what he meant by that? I clarified with him uh, that he was speaking of the vehicle that was indeed involved in the incident uh, in the downtown area as well as the vehicle that Officer Skolnick had fired rounds at. He confirmed this, and I subsequently told him to get into my squad car and uh, began traveling with him. Do you know the approximate time this was occurring? Um, the subject approached me at approximately 4.49 p.m. And so uh, you took the citizen with you in your squad? Yes, ma'am, I did. And did he direct you to a specific location? Yes, ma'am, he did. Huh. Where did you travel? Uh, from my location where I met up with this individual, we traveled westbound on Main Street and subsequently uh, made a left-hand turn to travel southbound on Maple Street. Um, we traveled approximately two blocks to the area uh, where I subsequently located the vehicle in the driveway. Fuck yeah. They were like, yup. So somebody saw this. I don't think it was the, the kid who testified because he was... My boy was over there. He was either stoned or something. He was just giving the worst answers ever. But this had to be somebody different who just knew that this was the car. Probably saw it run through the parade. Because remember, there's like hundreds of people there. So enough people saw that it was a red SUV. Somebody, He was somebody who just like, that's it, and started running for police. How did you know it was the vehicle you were looking for? Based off what Officer Skolton had previously described to me um, as a red Ford Escape. I observed a heavily damaged red Ford Escape in the driveway of 338 Maple. Guns drawn. Uh, this particular vehicle was heavily damaged in the front end. I also observed that uh, there was clothing embedded in the hood as well as a headband with blue lighting hanging from the side mirror. Crazy. Additionally, I observed a bullet hole in the windshield on the uh, passenger side. Did you secure this scene? I did. What did you do? Um, as I exited my fleet, uh, I drew um, my firearm to clear the vehicle. Imagine you're Daryl Brooks and you're driving through the parade acting a fool and you, you're about to get away and a bullet just smashes the, the driver's, uh, the passenger side windshield. That's some PTSD right there. Shit. He's probably in that cell still waking up thinking he's shot in the head and shit. Because what the fuck? That's scary. But good for him. Good for him. To ensure that uh, it was clear of persons that could potentially harm me uh, based on the information that I had garnered up to this point. And um, after that was done and rendered clear, um, additional resources that came to my location, uh, we secured it by taping off the entirety of this particular residence as well as the street. When you cleared the vehicle, were there any subjects present inside the vehicle? There were not. After uh, you had secured the scene, did you have an opportunity to take photographs of the, of the vehicle? Yes, ma'am, I did. And uh, what device did you use to capture these photographs? Not so each of our city of Waukesha police squads are um, assigned a cell phone. I believe this one in particular was an iPhone. Um, we utilize that to capture uh, photographic evidence as well. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but everybody uses iPhones. It's kind of crazy. And every time I see a cop and they're about to take pictures, it's an iPhone. And, and you would think they have like a special camera or something, but no, just an iPhone, I guess. I guess that's all you really need. So I utilize the cell phone from the squad. All right, I'm going to ask that exhibit number 99 be put up for the witness, please. Objection. Relevancy. Sir, do you see exhibit 99 on your screen? If not, it'll be up in a minute or so. Just let me know, please. Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. Do you recognize that photograph, sir? Yes, ma'am. What do you recognize the photograph to depict? It depicts a heavily damaged Ford Escape in the driveway. Sir, is this what the vehicle looked like when you first observed it? Yes, ma'am. And you had testified earlier that you were able to see some articles of clothing on the vehicle. Do you Damn, see look at the antifreeze on that bitch. Look at the... Yeah, that thing was leaking. He knocked off the whole muffler or some shit in the back. The, the dude was just driving like a maniac. I can't even imagine his mom driving this car because, like, the way it looks right now, it was made for him. Those items in this photograph. Ugly yes, and beat up, just um, like him. Could you please point them out? And that's a touch screen in front of you so you can mark it with a dot or an arrow or whatever you choose. So here on the hood... Near the windshield was a hat, and then clearly seen hanging from the driver's side mirror okay. is a headband that's partially illuminated. What do you mean illuminated? Uh, this particular headband had multiple, appeared to be blue LED lighting. Okay. 
So you know that's from the parade. You know that's literally from the parade. Damn, somebody's little cute light up headband bop into the air onto his car. Crazy shit, bro. He must have accumulated like 3,000 points off of just hitting people if you're playing that game. You know, everybody's like, five points, five points. Like, damn, bro. Yeah, ridiculous. Like, and it's good he didn't get any capital punishment. Fuck that. He needs to be alive and well, just existing, doing nothing. That's beautiful. That's the way, that's how it needs to be. The uh, front of the vehicle, it appears to me that the front bumper is laying on the ground. Is that accurate, sir? Objection, leading. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, ma'am, that's accurate. May we take the annotations down? Yeah, we can deal with that. Thank, Thank you, Judge. So, to your knowledge, no one had uh, touched or disturbed this vehicle, at least since the time you were present, Objections. before you photographed it. Objection, speculation. Overruled, you may answer. To my knowledge, no, there was no manipulation of this vehicle okay. prior to my arrival. Okay. And uh, at some point, did you look inside the vehicle? And I, I don't mean just to clear it of persons, I mean take a closer look inside the car. Yes, ma'am, I did. What was your purpose in doing that, sir? Uh, due to the nature of what was happening and the exigency of trying to identify who may have been inside the vehicle, um, I did locate documentation of identifying in nature. <laughs> and he has identifying shit in his car. What, insurance? Something. Complete moron. You're going to do all this stupid shit, leave the car, and all the stuff is in there to find you. You're not going nowhere. The best thing he could have did was sit there in the car and get arrested. That would have been the best thing he would have did. But instead, he went on the run. And do you remember the name on that paperwork? Yes, ma'am, I do. What was the name on the paperwork inside the vehicle? The name on the paperwork inside the vehicle was one Darrell Edward Brooks, Jr., Mel Black, date of birth 2 of 1982. And in fact, was there more than one piece of paper inside the vehicle containing that same personal identifying information? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled the witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, there was more than one item. I don't see a front license plate in this photograph. Do you, sir? No, ma'am. <laughs> Where is the license plate? May I draw? Yes. Uh, it was determined later that this is actually the license plate Okay. on the front. Not from the photograph, but from your recollection, was the rear license plate clearly visible? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am. The rear license plate was clearly visible on the vehicle. Did you attempt to run the license plate for this vehicle? Yes, I did via police radio. What information did you learn about the registration of this vehicle? Uh, the vehicle displayed a Wisconsin registration plate of A. Adam D. David P. Paul 9256, which listed to a Don L. Woods out of the city of Milwaukee. Do you remember the approximate location of the um, street where Don Woods lived? Objection. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. No, I do not recall that information. Did you, you just remember City Walk, or excuse me, City of Milwaukee. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. See, they already found your mama. They found you. They probably found your grandma. They found your daddy. They they found every. <laughs> they found his daddy. <laughs> they found everything, bro. He's gonna go away and leave the documents in the car. First thing he should have did was grab the documents. Maybe rip the license plate off the car. You know, something spicy. But in a panic, runs off like a fucking moron. And and what do you do? You just you're just gonna go back home, huh? You're just gonna go back to your mom's house. <laughs> okay. And the vehicle was registered to Don Woods <clears throat> solely. Objection. Leading. Relevancy. Who who's it related to? Um, the objections are noted. Um, I'll sustain as to the form of the question and ask Attorney Upper to rephrase. Was the registration only in one person's name? From what I understand, it was. Okay. Do you know the relationship between Don Woods and Daryl Brooks? Objection. Speculation. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, ma'am, I do not know the relationship. 
at a later point, uh, as you were, well, strike that. Let me ask this. Did you remain with this vehicle for some time? Yes, for some time. And uh, were other resources, uh, law enforcement and other resources called to the area to deal with this vehicle, sir? Yes, ma'am, they were. And as that was occurring, are you aware of other police activity that was occurring nearby? Yes, ma'am, I was. And what was that, please? I had heard via police radio officer Luling advised that he was out with a subject in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, which is just a couple blocks away. And did you hear Officer Luling indicate a name for the subject that he was out with? Yes, I did. And what was that name? Officer Luling aired over police radio that he was out with a male subject identifying himself as Darrell Brooks. All right, sir, thank you. I don't have any other questions. We can take down 99. They found him like a hawk. He, shit, he was free for a few hours, maybe. And that's the thing, like, the police, especially in a small place like that, if you were in L.A., New York, or Chicago, or some shit, you could probably disappear for a little while. It'd be really hard to find. But, bro, you're in Milwaukee. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not really, where was it? They're, they're, in, they're in Waukesha, bro. Like, they're going to find you, okay? And not everybody's breaking the law like that, I feel like, out there. Like, you're just going to have the, you know, the known criminals, like Daryl Brooks, and then you have the law-abiding citizens. There's no, like, it's not going to be that hard. But anyways, people, they call his ass real quick. Of course, he's going to come back with the cross-examination. And I'm going to say one thing. He's going to bring up that same exhibit. Even though it's incriminating, completely incriminating, he's going to bring up the exact same exhibit because they did. Because he has no path of execution. Therefore, he just has to follow their path, which makes him, what, more guilty. This shit's crazy. It's the craziest shit ever. But anyways, people, I'll see you in the next one. Stay inside. Stay safe. I love y'all. I'm out of here.